Hi there, welcome back to my channel Scrap and Coffee. In today's video we are going to create the loaded pocket for our box full of goodies. Um, which can also be of course a standalone project. But just to give you a quick reminder of what it is that we are making is a loaded pocket, like the name says it, with um, two sets of um, smaller pockets here at the front where we can place photos in and then in the middle we have a large pocket where we can place some larger elements larger photo mats and um, what I cut my photo mats to is seven and three eighths by I, I think I only did five and one eighth of an inch and then I've made the pull tab so that sticks out a little bit but just yeah make it a little bit smaller than your um, than the project so so it can fit in right and then on the back side we have this larger pocket here with an acetate element which i'm showing you of course how i did this with the pattern paper as well so this is what we will be creating in today's video okay let's create a loaded pocket so we're going to start with the big piece if you have the cutting guide it should be PC, but I'm not 100% sure. But it's the pieces on the loaded pocket in the cutting guide. Now this piece is 8.5 by 11. And with the 8.5 inch side on top, we are going to score at half an inch. And at 8 inches. And then we are going to turn it, so the 11 inches on top, and we're going to score halfway at five and a half inches. Okay, with the dented side of the score lines facing me, I'm going to apply tape on the half inch part uh, on one side only. So we start with our tape at the score line here in the middle. It doesn't really matter on what side you do this because both sides are the same. As long as you're doing it on the dented side, we're going to do it on top and bottom from this point of view. Give it a burnish. Then here in the middle, our score lines form an intersection. And where we have put the tape, I'm going to cut with an angle towards that intersection. So I do that on both sides as well. And then the side that doesn't have tape, we are going to cut that off. So I would like to turn it over and do this with a knife and a ruler, but you can also do it with scissors. One of these days I'm going to get the longer scissors from Tim Holtz, so maybe I find it easier to do with scissors as well. But for now, my best results, I get it with a straight blade and my ruler. So I line it up just before the score line. And cut that piece off there is some background noise going on I'm sorry for that but they are um, working on the exterior of the neighborhood I'm not sure how to say that but like mowing the lawn and they have planted some trees all good things but it's a little bit noisy Okay, so now we have done that, I'm going to fold all my score lines towards the bumpy side. And let's not forget, I'm also angling the half inch here on top where we have the tape. Just a slight angle for hiding construction. Make sure you don't cut into your score line. And fold on those as well. little bit of a I did that with placing my tape sometimes that happens to me okay. okay and we are basically going to stick this on top of each other and create like a pouched pocket I'm just gonna remove tape backings on both sides I guess and bring it up slowly Line it up as best as I can. See, 
See, there is a little pouch there. I'm giving it all a good burnish. And then we are gonna go to our second piece of cardstock. Um, that should be piece D, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. This piece measures eight and a half by six. And with the eight and a half inch side on top, we will score again half an inch and eight inches. This is something that you will find in the cutting guide quite often. And then turn it to the six inch side on top and you score half an inch. I like to do that on this side, so that's five and a half. So that's the same thing as scoring half an inch, right? So however you prefer to do that. Now on this pocket, I have three score lines. And there is no score line here along the top. On that side, I'm going to find the center, which is four and a quarter from the cut edge. So I'm going to mark that. And then here on the score line and I measure from the bottom cut edge no from the score line as well I'm going to measure four and a quarter so I measure on my score line from the score line that's pretty pretty important four and a quarter and I do the same thing right here so I start measuring at the horizontal score line at the bottom and I measure on the score line here on the left hand side four and a quarters up and then I'm going to connect the mark here that marks the center with that mark right there all the way to the cut edge so here as well all the way to the cut edge and that is what I'm going to cut off from this pocket. Okay, I kind of feel that I didn't do the best job with uh, making my marks, but we'll see what happens. Okay, remove my pencil lines and now I can apply some tape. I'm going to go just over the angled edge there and I will cut off my overhang with scissors. So tape goes on three sides, on the dented side. So I'm going to cut off my overhang here. And what I will also do is miter the corners here so you're going to cut with a 45 degree angle straight through your intersection of score lines and then I'm going to turn it over and fold the bottom one in and I'm going to mark here to where that flap is going and open that back up and then what I want to do is find the center of my piece here as well. It should be four and a quarter, right? Mark that and connect that with the point here at the top, which should be the center as well. But in my case, I might be a little off, but it's not going to be much. Okay, and then... Yeah, so I need to cut that down a little bit. I need to do a little measurement here. Uh, let's do four and three quarters. Okay, your pieces D1 are going to be four and three quarters by one. So I had to cut my pieces down a little bit. And we are going to score these at half an inch. Put it in the scoreboard, score half an inch, and the other one as well. And this part is optional, you don't have to do this. You can also make this a one large pocket. 
uh, but I'm going to split it up into two separate pockets. So that's what we're going to do right now. So on the dented side we are going to apply tape on both half inch parts. Give it a burnish. Fold it in half, tape on the outside. So from the cut edge, from the bottom, from the folded edge, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut with an angle. It was just somebody stopping in front of my house and making a picture, so I, I was a little distracted, like what's going on. But it's, uh, there are a few houses up for sale in the neighborhood. So I'm thinking they are making pictures because they also stopped at another house that's for sale. So maybe they are just taking pictures of uh, <laughs> of that. Okay, so once we've done that, we are going to do. If you have seen the envelope uh, one, we've done this before. We are going to place these hinges here in the middle. And what you want to make sure of is that you don't have any overhang here on top. And we've marked a line here to where this flap is coming. And you don't want to go over that line as well. So place it in between those two points. And a folded edge bumped up against folded edge. I'm just making sure that I have some space on top and bottom. Place that down. Right up against it. Okay, and now we still need to fold on our flaps here on the side. We are going to make sure that these three flaps here don't touch each other. If you have any overlapping there, you just fold it open and just cut it a little bit more. I'm, I'm good here, so giving it all a good burnish once more. We are going to get our first base piece in, and it doesn't really matter on what side you are going to do this, uh, but we are going to line it up on three sides. So the opening of the pouch is on top, and we are going to stick this on top of that. And I just want to make sure that my little angle point there is not sticking out on top. It's perfect, but if you do have it a little sticking out a little bit, then I would suggest just cut it down slightly. Okay, remove the tape packing. Now this is coming up on me a little bit, so I'm putting some weight on there so I can line up my corners. But whatever works for you, right? Okay, again, well I say again because I did it in the other project as well. I'm just using some tape here. Over that half inch part. And now carefully we are going to remove the tape backing and stick all of this down. So again, yes it's perfect. So all the tape backing removed. Okay, yeah, the background noise doesn't seem to be going anywhere, so I'm just continuing. I'm just sticking it down here, aligning it to the side. Stick down the middle and the other edge. Okay, so that is on there. Then we have two pieces that are um, four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So this time I'm going to do it with two pockets next to each other. Uh, we are going to align one of the sides on top, it's all the same, but on one side we are going to score half an inch and four and a quarters. And on the other side only half an inch from one side, so I like to do that at the four and a quarter mark. But that's the same thing as doing it at half an inch. So we're going to do that for both pieces. Okay, 
score lines on three sides. There is no score line on top for me. And on one piece, I'm going to make a mark on my score line. And I'm measuring from the top cut edge one and a half inches down. So on the score line, one and a half inches from the top edge. And then I'm going to go to the score line here on my left hand side and connect that pencil line with the top of the score line and go all the way to the cut edge here. So I'm trying to show you up close. My measure point was on the score line, one and a half inches down. I go up to the score line there and I connect the pencil line all the way to the cut edge. So on this piece I'm going to do the same thing. I'm only going to do it mirrored. So on this side, on my score line, one and a half inches down. And I'm going to connect it with the top of my score line right there. So we did that mirrored and I'm going to cut on both pencil lines. So this is what we have. Now I can apply my tape. So on both pieces, on the dented side, On the three sides with a score line, right? Okay, once the tape is on there, I'm giving it a good burnish. I have some tape overhang here where the angle is made, so cut that away. And then here at the bottom, we have two intersections of score lines. Cut straight through them to miter the corners there. And then also angle the top flap here. Make sure you don't cut in your score line. Okay, get all of that out of the way. And then we can fold and burnish all the score lines. Again, make sure that you don't have any overlap of your flaps here like I have, then we open it back up and cut again. That's better. Okay, I can still see my pencil line here a little bit, so I'm going to erase that. Getting our base piece back in. You see we have the angle here. We are going to place the pocket with the higher side on the left hand side. On the left hand side. And we should line up here. Up to the point where, the, uh, yeah, where this pocket ends basically. And then the other one goes next to it. Same thing there. That looks about right. So I'm just going to start with this pocket here, lining it up in the corner, bringing it along the bottom. Okay. And then bring it along the side. That's one. And then the second one should fit on here quite exactly next to it. Okay, so stick that down. So if you want to have acetate in this piece as well, what you could do is go back to the envelope tutorial um, and make a piece like this. You only need to make it longer 
because this one is uh, five and a half in height and this one is only four and three quarters in height the back pocket uh, but you can do the same technique um, as we did here on that front pocket part with the windows you could repeat that here as well but I didn't uh, because I wanted to change that up but um, that is a possibility you just need to um, adjust this measurement with uh, three quarters of an inch you need to add three quarters of an inch to the measurement do I say that right? because this is four and a quarter, four and three quarters five and a half, yes three quarters of an inch you need to add Okay, next up, we are going to work on the back side. We are going to add a pocket here as well. And we are going to make a pocket out of piece F. So this one is eight and a half by four and a quarter, I believe, from the top of my head. And we are going to start with eight and a half inches on top in our scoreboard and score half an inch. 8 inches, turn it, yes, 4 and a quarter inside on top and score half an inch. And I like to do that on this side, so I'm scoring at 3 and 3 quarters, which is the same thing as scoring half an inch, right? Okay, I'm going to flip this piece over where I see the bumpy side of my piece. And I'm going to make a U-shaped window in this pocket. So that means that I'm going to draw a line on the three sides where I have a score line. And this time I want to have 5 eighths of an inch. So I have a little bit more to hold on to basically. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how to say that. But I am measuring 1 and 1 eighth of an inch from my cut edge on the side with a score line and then I'm going to do that same thing on the short side so one and one eighth of an inch and I'm going to go all the way to the cut edge here where there is no score line so also here all the way up to the cut edge and then I've created that U-shape, basically. And I'm going to cut out that center part. So I'm making a little hole on the intersection of my pencil lines. And I think I've said it before, maybe not in this video, but you don't really need to do that. That's just something that I prefer. I feel that it helps me to get a nice clean corner when I cut something out like this, but also it helps me with lining up my blade. One more. Okay. That is out. And then I have prepared a piece of acetate. I need to check if I did that right. I did. So on this piece of acetate, I think I can use quarter inch tape. Just checking. Should be fine. I'm gonna go and place tape along three sides. So on both short sides and one of the longer sides really close to the cut edge just check really quick if that's going to be okay yep that's going to be fine carefully burnish on my tape and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to place this piece sideways that's just what works for me right you you just need to do what works for you but I'm going to remove the tape backing. I'm going to leave it on on one short side because that's just giving me a little bit of time to figure out that I'm having this right. And the, the side where I don't have any tape, I'm going to line it up as best as I can with that cut edge here. That's not a lot, but it's there and I want it to line up with it. So here where I still have my tape on, I can just 
place it on the cardstock and it can still move. And then try to hold that in place. And I'm aiming for not having any tape overhang on the inside. Okay. Oh, I'm really close to the edge there. A little bit too focused on the fact that I was lining up there, but I'm fine. <laughs> and then I can remove the tape back in here as well. And carefully burnish on the tape. Okay, and then we can turn it over to the pretty side. And now I'm going to place my tape here. And I always, or always, I try to remember to do that after I've made my frame. Because when I have my tape on here already and I want to cut the frame, it's a little bit slippery on my work surface with the tape backing. That's really smooth. And then I'm... Uh, Sometimes the piece slips away underneath me and I'm off with cutting. So on the three sides, where there is a score line, I'm going to place our tape along the cut edge. Give it a burnish. And find my scissors. And I'm going to cut with a 45 degree angle straight through the intersection of score lines. Here we go. And then there we go. And then again, I can also do angle it here on top a little bit. Just make sure you don't cut into your score line. And now we can fold on the score lines. And then we're gonna make sure that there is no overlapping here. See, mine overlap here a little bit. So here, if I just do, probably if I just do this, it will be fine. Here, let me see. So I'm just opening it up, and it's just that little point there that's just got to get away. Yep. That's enough. And you just don't want it to overlap because that will give bulk. And the opening of the pocket is on top. And I'm going to place this piece at the bottom. Line it up on three sides. So again, I'm going to remove the tape backing from this long part at the bottom of the pocket. And just line up my corners. The best I can get it. And then I'm going to remove the tape backing here on the sides. Did I give you a measurement for the acetate? Okay, I will put it on, on top of the screen when we cut the S when we do the acetate, but it's I believe three and a half inches by by seven. But I will put it on top. I just think about it right now. And I didn't give you that measurement. Okay, fold everything in. It's a little bit bulky underneath here, so it might work against you. Line up the edge on the side. Now I forgot to clean my acetate on the inside, so you want to do that before you stick it down. And I have like a microfiber cloth that's really dirty, but ink on it and everything. And there we have it, a loaded pocket, or at least we still need to load it, but <laughs> there is plenty of room to put stuff in here. So you have your large pocket in the middle. We have two pockets here on the side. I'm going to find a scrap piece of paper. So your large pocket right here. If I have time, I will do a video on photo mats, etc. Uh, maybe using some scraps as well. We have a pocket here. And a pocket here, and then we have a pocket here, and a pocket here. And then on the back side we have our acetate pocket, uh, where hopefully we can do something fun with the pattern and paper. So, lots and lots of spaces in this project. Um, yeah, I've said it a couple of times, but no promises. But if I have time, I will do my best to film 
uh, some decorating techniques on this project so um, no promise but if I have time I will definitely do it so this is the loaded pocket construction uh, I hope you like it thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one bye bye